Hey guys, my name is Mark from JazzGuitarLessons.net and welcome to this short video on the diminished scale. As you've probably guessed, this is a sound I've been using uh, in this little uh, part of the lick. So this video is going to be super applied, so I recommend that you pause and that you grab your, your guitar. You could even pause and rewind and follow along with me. Uh, I had several questions and over the years I'm like, ah! I have this method for addressing the diminished scale, which is super obvious for guitar, super simple. You'll have to learn it once and you're done for life. So in this video, we're gonna apply the diminished scale in the context of a G chord. That is a G7, so that's a shell, so G, F, and B flat, G7 flat nine, which you will know the flat nine is the A flat note here, all right? So it sounds like this. That, that's one of the way you could play the G7. You could play a G13 like this. So what I wanna do with you right now is to uh, use the G7 flat nine a dominant, a dominant altered chord to build the diminished scale around it. A student's going, yeah, I have G7 flat nine, should I use the whole half or the half whole? That's all the questions we'll be answering in this video. So let's get started, grab your guitar. So the first thing you want to do is orient yourself with your index on the third fret and have the G here. So this is your the root note of your, your G7 flat nine chord. We are not looking at the diminished chord, we're really looking at the altered uh, counterpart of this. So the G is here. The next step is to build the note three, five, seven, and flat nine of the G7 chord, like this, three, five, flat seven, and flat nine. Or in letter names, B, D, F, A flat. If you're quick on the draw, you notice this is a B diminished seven arpeggio. And if you were to pedal it against a G, so you get, here, so you hear B, D, F, natural, A flat. So you know some jazz teachers will go, yeah, don't practice your arpeggios, one, three, seven, uh, one, three, five, seven. Instead, start on the third, three, five, seven, nine. This is what we're doing, all right? So you got the three, five, flat seven, flat nine. And now what you wanna do is approach each note by half step, so. And the next note is here, so. So approach B, approach D, approach F, approach A flat. Let's do that slowly together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations. You have the diminished scale. You have just played the diminished scale. The diminished scale. If you were to lining up on one string, and started, you would play a half step, a whole step, a half step, a whole step, a half step. It is a symmetrical scale and it contains eight notes. As opposed to, you know, the major scales and modes that contain seven notes. So let me do it again and make sure you can follow along. And then I'll get in the nitty gritty of the, the fingerings of guitar and some guitar exercises you can do with that. So let's get going. Approach the B, approach the D, approach the F, approach the A, maybe let's go down. Okay, perfect. Now let's go back to guitar stuff. So what I like to think about, I like to think of my G, G triad like this. So you go G, A flat, so that here. So that's why I said orient yourself with your index here. This is where your G is. Think of your good old bar, like this is, you know, there it is. So G, A flat, B approaching to your B, B flat to B natural, and then here, Take this note, but it's here. So let me recap from G. G, A flat, B flat, B, D flat, D. Ah, it's already started, started to sound like jazz a little bit, all right? So here. Then lastly, this. So that's the scale. So now we've started it from G. That's what I, that's what I wanted to get you to play. So G, approach the B, approach the D, approach the F. Let's do it backwards. And then you can start to shred on this. All right, so that's the basic guitar position. Of course, now you can add the top string and you can even add this. So let's just see if you can do the whole thing from here. So a half step, approach, approach, approach. 
and back down. So you see, it's kind of a, a position for guitar that you have the whole, you have the whole thing under there. Now the only thing that's left is our three bottom strings that we didn't look at. And I'll tell you the secret. Super simple. Uh, before we get into the technical nitty gritty of this, I wanted to mention in passing. I do work with a really close group uh, of people in a one-on-one -on -one fashion coaching. So if you think you'd be a good fit for this, or you'd like to take your playing to the next level, the next few weeks and few months, just book a call with me. It's free of charge. Uh, we'll get together on the phone and I can uh, talk about your goals and establish a plan and see if we can move forward. There's a link in the description below to book a call with Mark. So I'll see you there. Thank you. Uh, so with the bottom strings, we start with the G. So what I like to imagine here is that you have a whole step and a half step. So here you have your half step and then the whole step. So you get your F is here. So just make that shape memorized in your mind because the same shape repeats itself on the next string. So you have a half step and then you have a hole and then you have another half step. So starting with the G and same thing on the bottom string. That's how I started the video, right? So a half, whole, half, whole, half, whole, half, whole, half, whole, half. By no, mean it, no means is this the only way you could approach the scale. By the way, this is just one of my favorite fingerings. You feel free to explore other different fingerings. So here we go again, bottom strings. And then if you climb back up, so long as you remember the formula, you go half step, whole step, half step, next string, half step, whole step, next string, and then what we talked about since the beginning of the video. And you got the whole scale. Now there's two more things I want to get across to you. Now, of course, this is just a scale. It's like sitting down with a dictionary, learning a bunch of words. It doesn't make that you will have an interesting story to tell. So you have to make elements of the language. Two things. Number one, the scale is symmetrical and is super guitar friendly. Because of its nature, if you climb up three frets, you get the exact same scale fingering. So that's why I said you need to learn it once in one place and then it replicates itself over the entire fretboard. Here's what I mean. We're here, right? So aligned with third fret. If I took my hand up and did the same pattern of notes, I'm playing the exact same eight notes. And if I did it again, three frets higher, same thing. So you don't need to learn any new fingering because you have the same, you have this one here, here, here. And if it would be a, a scale, the diminished scale that's a half step up or down, you just move and then the, the fingerings replicate themselves, right? So that's really important to know. It's symmetrical and repeats itself with identical fingerings. Guitar is great for this. Piano players might swear at the scale, but for us, we're like, yeah, it's symmetrical, perfect. Now, the other thing is you should, and if you want to do this, you should be practicing to shred in it. Like when I started this video, it's like you should be practicing to be able to make a statement. Further, and I'll show you some tips to do that. And furthermore, you should attempt to apply this during a five chord. So if you have a two, five, one in the key of C, and see if you can apply the scale during the G7 and properly resolve it. It's one thing to use a crazy scale to have a crazy sound, diminished or altered or whatever. It's another thing to make sure that it does what it's supposed to do, which is actually resolving. Uh, I don't want to demonstrate this in the video. I don't have my backing track set up and whatever, but you get the gist of it. Play on a G7 flat nine, friggin' resolve like your life depends on it on the C. Where do you resolve on the C? Well, resolve on the E note on the third, right? Or the fifth, you know, go. And then you're there, right? So that's really important that you do that work. And to shred, I'll give you just one example of a pattern that you could do. You could build any sort of pattern. Look at the triads that are built in the, the uh, uh, built in the, by the way, there's four major triads, four minor triads with approach notes like. You could approach every note of the G major triad, you could approach it by a half step because it's part of the scale, remember? One thing I like to do linearly for guitarists to save us and sound a bit more like horns is to go a four note pattern. So, 
right? Uh, sorry. Like I'm, uh, I'm trying to do it too fast because now I'm filming this video. You could do the same uh, forward, so. Right, you, you could really rehearse systematic patterns through the scale just to work up the fingerings and then eventually you're on that chord and you're like, hey Mark, Mixolydian's pretty boring. I don't want to play a blues line again, whatever. There it is. All right, guys, I know I talked to, uh, I believe it was Mark recently, who we talked and, and asked questions about how to play the Dimnish scale. I'm like, I've been meaning to do this video for 10 years. Here it is, this is my method. This is uh, something I sort of devised for myself. It works like a charm. You don't need to overextend yourself with crazy fingerings like the Berkeley method, you just learn it. Third, third position focus, learn the top four strings and then the bottom three strings are symmetrical and you're done. Again, my name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net. Improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher. Be sure to book a call if you're interested in finding out if we could uh, you know, really map a plan and maximize your the efficiency of your practice, the kind of vocabulary you bring up to speed like this. Uh, don't uh, remember, we also look at your practice regiment routine, track your progress. We also look in learning the language, which is learning the standards, and of course the technicality of this and all that goes into a linear improvisation. So be sure to book a call using the link below, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.